Hello, I am Boyd Edwards, professor of physics at Utah State University. Today we're going to have some fun while learning some physics. Using this rotating platform that we call the USU Coriolis Carousel. And I have four amazing riders on this carousel. And what they'll be doing is passing this ball back and forth uh, between each other. We'll be seeing the movement of the ball from four cameras, two stationary cameras that don't rotate. One of them's over here, looking at the proceedings from the side. The other stationary camera is right up here, looking down on the rotating platform. We'll also have two rotating cameras, one right here that rotates with the carousel, and the other on Aiden's chest here, a GoPro, that will see the motion of the ball from his perspective. So what I'd like to do first is to have my amazing riders pass this ball gently back and forth a couple of times to show what happens on a non-rotating carousel. The ball goes straight, as seen by the overhead camera and the chest camera. So let's now see what happens when we uh, rotate this carousel counterclockwise. Let's get them up to speed. Okay, Aiden. Okay, let me stop the carousel and talk about what just happened. So Aiden was roughly right here when he threw that ball to Jocelyn opposite him. But what happened? The ball ended up in Olivia's hands. And why is that? And I might ask from Aiden's perspective why, why that was. Uh, because Jocelyn had already moved out of the way. Exactly. Jocelyn moved out of the way while the ball was in the air. Jocelyn rotated, and the ball didn't go to Jocelyn after all, but instead went to Olivia. Aiden's chest camera and the rotating overhead camera show the ball deflecting toward the right, while the stationary overhead camera shows the ball going straight. The ball deflects toward the thrower's right on a carousel that rotates counterclockwise, as seen by a rotating observer. On a carousel that rotates clockwise, the ball deflects toward the thrower's left. The force that causes this deflection is called the Coriolis force. What's the nature of this force? And, and you might say it's kind of an optical illusion because the ball is going straight as seen by stationary observers like us standing here. But the rotating observers and the rotating cameras show the ball curving to the right for a counterclockwise rotation and curving toward the left for a clockwise. So let's now replace, Eleanor, the ball with the dumbbells and do a different experiment. So what we're gonna do is to hand a dumbbell to each of the riders and have them, please don't throw them at the, at the people opposite you, but instead, what you're gonna do is start with a dumbbell in your chest, push it straight out, fast, and then pull it straight back fast. Okay, do that on the count of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Very good. Now let's try it counterclockwise. Okay, on the count of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's try it clockwise. One, two, three. What did it do, Isabel? It went, to the left. it went to the left. Now pull it back. One, two, three. Okay, do it one more time. Everybody ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Perfect. Here's the view from Aiden's chest camera. The dumbbell deflects to the right for counterclockwise rotation and to the left for clockwise rotation. 
Okay, so I'd like to ask um, Jocelyn whether whether that force that she felt when that dumbbell went out was that imaginary? Or did you actually feel the force pulling your arm to the side? I definitely felt the force pulling my arm to the side. Yeah. That's right. It's not imaginary. It's not an optical illusion. It's a real deal. It's a real force. And so this force actually, um, you can experience it on playgrounds, but you can also experience it on our rotating earth. It's harder though, because the earth rotates every 24 hours, whereas this carousel takes about four seconds to rotate once. So the Coriolis force is actually 21,600 times weaker on the rotating earth than it is on the carousel. So in your everyday life, when you're pushing dumbbells around or doing weights or something, you can't really feel the Coriolis force, but it is there. Are there instances where on the surface of the earth that you do experience the Coriolis force? And the answer is yes. When you fire a sniper bullet, high speed over long distances, Artillery shells, rockets, airplanes all experience the Coriolis force. The Earth rotates toward the east. When viewed from above the North Pole, the Earth rotates counterclockwise. And when viewed from above the South Pole, the Earth rotates clockwise. Consequently, people on the rotating Earth observe a Coriolis force to the right in the Northern Hemisphere and to the left in the Southern Hemisphere. But the most important place where the Coriolis force is experienced is in weather patterns. The Coriolis force is responsible for the counterclockwise rotation of hurricanes and cyclones and typhoons in the Northern Hemisphere and clockwise rotation of these tropical storms in the Southern Hemisphere. The two experiments that we did, one with the ball and one with the dumbbell, um, illustrate the kind of dual nature of the Coriolis force. In one case, it seems kind of like an optical illusion. Whereas in the other case with the dumbbells, it seems like a real force that, that exerts force on your arm and causes your arm to deflect. And that has been a struggle that science teachers over the ages have struggled with. Some people call it the a fictitious force or a pseudo force, or an effect. Generally now, the Coriolis force is called an inertial force. If you start with Newton's second law, which is F equals MA, that law applies when we're stationary, when, when we're not rotating. It's called an inertial reference frame. But when you um, transform the Newton's second law into a rotating frame, there are two forces that appear in the equations of motion. One is the Coriolis force, which depends on the rotation and the speed of the object, speed of the ball or the dumbbell or the sniper bullet within that rotating frame. The other is called the centrifugal force. It only depends on the speed of rotation. The, the centrifugal force is the force that you feel when you turn right in your car and you, your body feels pulled toward the left. That centrifugal force was also felt by our riders here as they spun around, they felt pressed against the back of their chairs. The quandary of science teachers and what to call it is reflected in this James Bond comic taken from the James Bond movie, Moonraker. And I'll put a link to that in the, in the description below. Anyway, fun with Coriolis and thanks for joining us today.